Okay, so today we're going to talk a little bit about plotting and how do you use plots to infer um, things about uh, your agents, basically. And what we really want to do is something called a histogram eventually, so we can see the full distribution of wealth within this model. Uh, but before we get there, I want to introduce the basic concept of plotting. So let's, let's start with just a, a plain old simple line graph like you saw in the original uh, L for All model. Now you'll notice that I've actually deleted the plot and that's because I want to show you how to recreate it. So the first thing you need to do in order to create a plot, right, is to go up and hit the add button and then choose plot and then click someplace on an empty screen spot, right? And then you can create the plot there. And so here, we're gonna type in the original name for this plot, which is bar attendance, right? So that's something we have to do, and that's gonna go across the top here. And then we have to give an x-axis label, which is this axis down here, and a y-axis label, which is this axis here. And so for the x-axis, uh, we'll put time, because this is occurring over time. And for the y-axis label, we'll put attendance, because that's what we're going to eventually be interested in plotting, is the attendance at the bar over time. Now, there are a couple other little things here, by the way, that I just want to point out. You don't, We're not going to mess with them at all today, but uh, auto scale will allow the plot to automatically adapt the graph, the, the, the how big the x-axis is and the y-axis is to plot all the values. And usually you want that turned on because you don't want to be plotting something you can't see. Uh, and then show legend will actually pop up a little legend that actually tells the viewer what is, uh, what is being plotted, right? Um, based upon the color of the pens and things like that. For this particular graph, we're really only gonna have one um, moving line. We're gonna add a threshold line as well, but that doesn't really, we don't really need to add that. Anyways, let's just see what happens when we hit okay right now. And if we hit set up and we go, you'll see it just plots this line at 100. And that's because the default uh, for the plot command is to plot the count of the turtles and in the all for all model the number of turtles doesn't change at all so uh, it remains constant over time so what we really want to do is have it plot the um, you know maybe the whether or not someone is attending the number of people attending the bar right but um, and so maybe you might think if you remember from looking at the model so let's go look at the model a little bit um, I might blow that up a little bit in terms of seeing it. Um, so you might think that maybe, you know, the turtles own this thing called attend, uh, but the problem with using attend to plot the number of things is that attend isn't actually set right away uh, because we let the model, we let the agents start out in like kind of a null state, right? Um, and so as a result, plotting always runs into some troubles if we try and plot something right away that hasn't been set. So we're not gonna use attend, but you'll notice there is this variable called attendance uh, that's a global, and maybe glo that's what we want, right? Well, one way to th find out if you're working with a model that you don't know, you know super well is to see how attendance is set, right? So if we search for attendance, you'll see that you know it sets its current attendance at the bar is what it says it is. Um, and there's um, a couple other references, but let's see where it's actually set. And the first time it's set, it's set to this history that's been created. So um, that's actually a good thing. So it's set right away. And in fact, if we keep looking at all the references to attendance, you'll see that basically whenever a turtle decides to attend the bar, then the attendance is incremented. So that probably is actually what we want, right? Um, and and in fact, at the end of every tick, right, it sets, or sorry, not at the end of every tick, but in the middle, it sets the attendance to the count of the turtles on the bar patches. So we know attendance is kind of what we we'll want to monitor. So we can go back now to our plot and we can edit it, right? And we can edit what it's plotting to instead of being plot count turtles, be plot attendance, right? Okay, so hit okay, it's set up and hit go, and now we've kind of got the plot that we really wanted, right? Um, now, you know, the one thing that was different before, though, is we also had the threshold line being plotted. I don't know if you remember, but at 60, which is the threshold for the bar being crowded, right, as it's currently set right here, um, there was a red line just across the entire graph. So how do we add that as well? Um, well, one way to add that, right, is to, um, basically go in and add another pen to the plot. So we're gonna add a pen, and um, we probably don't want it to be gray, that's a little hard to see compared to black, so let's make it red, so we can click on color, and then click in the color swatches on red, 
hit OK. Um, and then we can, um, one of the things we're going to need is because this line is going to change as the graph grows, uh, we probably want to just reset it on a regular basis. Um, so there's a command called uh, plot pen reset, which just basically says don't keep drawing from the same point you were on, but instead start over again. Um, and so we're just going to allow it to start over every single time it does an update, essentially, right? And we can do a plot x y, and uh, we can do zero, right? Because that where where do we want this line to be from? We want it to be from the zero overcrowding threshold point to the maximum overcrowding threshold point over here, right? So we have to tell it start at zero and overcrowding threshold, which is what which is where the, the threshold is set to, and that's set up here by this slider, right? And then we have to go plot x, y, and we want to do the max x. Now sometimes, you know, I can't remember right now what the command is for doing give over the, the, the argument for getting the max x coordinate of a plot. I know there is one, but I can't remember it. So often what I'll do in that case, and I can't actually do it with this window open, is I'll go up and I'll go to the net logo dictionary. Right? And so when they pull up the net logo dictionary, you get right away um, uh, all the different commands, and I can go down to plotting. And I can try and look to see what was that X, and there it is, plot X max, I think is what I want. Reports the min or max value or the X or Y axis, as you said, right? So that's exactly what I want. I want that X maximum value, right? And so let's go ahead and close out that window again. And now I can go in here, and I can go in here, and I can go plot X max over crowding threshold. Right, so this is going to plot a point line from zero overcrowding threshold to plot x max overcrowding threshold. Hit OK, hit OK, hit Setup, and you see applied it right away because that one is known. We know the values of that, and there we go. Now we have a a graph that exactly reproduces what we're doing. Now this isn't exactly. This doesn't tell us anything more than the original model does. So it's not really an extension at this point. In the next talk, for to add an extension, we're going to add a histogram so that we can see the full distribution of, of the rewards.